Hey everybody, Brandon here from CAD Intentions and in today's video I'm going to explain how layers work within AutoCAD as well as some best practices, how to keep them clean and organized in your drawing and if you stick around to the end I'm going to show you some bonus commands that are going to definitely save you some headaches. Let's jump right in. So there are a lot of different starting points where new AutoCAD users could begin. You could end up with a drawing that you're starting with. If you're say starting with a new company and you're just needing to work on theirs, you're going to have a list of layers that you may or may not understand. Um, you could also just be starting directly from scratch. In that case, your layer list, which is up here on the ribbon on the home tab is going to be completely blank. You're just going to have that zero layer, which is the default layer within AutoCAD. Now, to back up a little bit more, what is a layer? So a layer is like a group or a filter of objects. Everything on that layer can be controlled in various ways within AutoCAD. This is a way to easily and quickly organize your drawings to keep them clutter free, but also organize them in terms of color, uh, plot styles, um, line types and more. So you can see in this example drawing here, this is a floor plan. And if we click the layer drop down, you can see the different layers within this drawing. Now this one is pretty basic and not super or overly organized. It's simply got descriptive names for each layer that correspond to what is on that layer. So as you begin to learn AutoCAD and start using it more in your day to day life or in your career, you're going to realize that keeping a drawing organized is really the key to productivity and your sanity over time. If you end up with too many objects on a single layer or no organization at all, when you go to plot and create uh, clean production drawings or send this file to somebody, they're going to have no idea what anything is, where it is, or how to say turn it on and off. Now, Going into some of these functions of layers, you can simply turn a layer on and off by selecting this light bulb from the drop down or the layer manager, which can be accessed by clicking this button here. And it's going to open up a window on one of your other screens or on your main screen if you're only using a single monitor. Now, from within your layer manager or the drop down, as I mentioned, you can click on the uh, light bulb here and turn objects on that layer on and off. So everything on that layer is going to turn off when you click the light bulb off and when you click it on everything's going to appear. So this is going to change the visibility state from on to off. You can also do the similar thing with the freeze button. Now this is going to have different effects. Freeze is not going to completely remove it uh, and in some cases you're going to be able to freeze objects or layers within specific viewports or layouts of your drawing. So say in one layout on the left you want to show your entire floor plan but the one on the right you only want to show say the electrical turned on that's going to allow you to freeze or turn off all of the other layers that are not applicable to the drawing you're working on. So that's a little bit about what they do and how they're used. Now let's look at a few different uh, options or situations you could be running into. As I mentioned, you could end up with a drawing that has no layers. So to create new layers, you're going to want to use that layers properties manager here and simply click the layer symbol here with the little star on it or use the quick command alt n. This is going to allow you to create a new layer. You can give it a name. Now you're going to want to use some sort of a standard or descriptor for your layer names. Having them random or numbered is not going to be helpful in the long run. I highly recommend using an industry or company standard. If you're working for an employer, ask and learn their layer standards and naming conventions. They're going to have standards for the colors, the line weights, the line types, as well as transparency and plotting options. They're also going to recommend naming conventions, and this is something you're going to want to follow as closely as possible. 
If you're not working for a company or you don't have a set of standards, I highly recommend adapting or adopting uh, one of the industry standards. One that I come across quite often is the AIA, American Institute of Architecture. They have their own layer standards and you can see I've used them here. You can go to their website. Uh, I'll put a link to that down below and you can get this. I also teach and show you how to set up your drawings along with a template that contains all of these layers pre-added as well as a ton of different title blocks and layouts built for you in my AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows course, which you can check out at the link up above and down below. It's packed full of 15 years of tips, tricks, and workflows that are going to move you from beginner all the way up to an intermediate drafter and teach you kind of the processes and steps you should be taking for all of your drawings, including starting from a template, which should be everybody's first step, all the way to drawing production, XREFs, annotation, dimensions, layers, uh, creating your layouts and drawings, exporting, PDFing, and sending out that finished product. I walk you through a few examples of real world style projects from start to finish. Again, you can get that course discounted at the link up above and down below. Now, moving along, if you do have a set of layers similar to uh, the AIA, or if you're using the template from my course, you're gonna have a list like this. Now, here's a quick trick to help filter or search through these lists a lot quicker. Now you can create filters over here on the left simply by click, right clicking on the all and creating a new group filter or a new properties filter. Group filters are basically going to allow you to choose a handful of layers and group them together. This could be say your production layers versus design layers. You may want to be able to turn off your design layers quickly. This could be like construction lines and text for yourself and notes that you don't want plotting. And then your plotting or production group could turn everything on like the dimensions and notes and your disclaimers and title blocks, that kind of thing. Or you can create properties filters. And we'll do an example here. Properties filters allow you to filter the layers by any of the properties that they contain, grouping them together by that property or by multiple properties. One that I'll typically have is an annotation, so I'll call this Anno, and I'm simply going to, oh, I've already got one here, so we'll just call this one Anno2 because I've already made this one in this drawing, but what you're going to want to do is use a wildcard, which means that it doesn't matter the beginning part or the end part if you uh, sandwich a word in between two asterisks or wildcards. So I'm going to type in an asterisk and then A N N O and then another asterisk. And that's going to add every layer that has those four letters in it A N N O. So you can see the list down below. By hitting OK, I now can select that. Uh, property filter and it's going to filter out all of the layers for me so that I only see the annotation layers within my drawing. This is going to allow me to quickly and easily turn them off, change their plot settings, line weights, line types, etc. Um, again, I wanted to mention this one here. If you see the plot uh, icon has a little red circle with a line through it. That means that this layer will not plot when you go to print your drawings. So if you're ending up in this weird issue where you're plotting drawings but things aren't showing up, make sure you check that this is turned on. You can change it by simply clicking on it. Now another trick with layers is that you can lock them when they're set and you don't want them to accidentally be edited. This is great for say floor plans or site plans. I highly recommend locking things like your walls or your lot lines. These typically are not going to change throughout the life of a project. And if they do, you'll want to know that these are changing. So you'll want to have to unlock them to change them. To lock a layer in the layer manager or in the drop down here, you simply click on the lock icon to lock it. You can see I have the walls locked and I can click to unlock or lock them. By locking them, you can select them, but you can't do anything. You can't move, edit, or change them. It's simply going to highlight that lock icon until you go and turn that on or off to be able to edit them again. Now, a few quick tips when you're getting started and working with layers. Don't 
name layers in confusing or duplicate ways. Uh, stick to clear, concise, and easy to understand layer names. And as I mentioned, always follow your company standard if you have them. I also like to use layers to uh, designate the color of my objects. You can have that set by creating any object and in the properties here, control and one to bring up your properties menu and under color, making sure that it is selected by layer. Now, whichever layer this object goes on. So I select my object and I'm simply going to click the layer drop down and put it on the cabinetry layer. You can see that the color and settings now change to match that cabinetry layer. This is how you can control the style, look, and uh, display of all of the objects within your drawing by using that by layer option for all of those settings and then setting them in the layer properties manager. You have full control over everything in your drawing from one place. If you all of a sudden want to change the color of say our text from red to yellow, simply changing it in your layer manager is going to then change it in all of your drawing. This is a huge time saver and a great way to keep things organized and differentiated from each other on the fly. Now, I hope that helps explain what layers are and how they kind of work in AutoCAD. For a deeper dive, I highly recommend checking out some of my other videos on layers, as well as checking out my AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows course for the whole bigger picture. Now, I wanted to leave you with a few quick commands that are going to save you a ton of time when working with layers. So up here are some of the quick commands that you're going to want to memorize and learn for layers. Make current is a great one. By selecting any object and clicking make current, it now has changed my current layer to the layer of that object. Now I can select this appliance here and click make current. Now I hit escape and I've got nothing selected, but I'm on the appliances layer. What that means is that any object I make is now going to default to being on that layer. This is a great way to quickly change which layer you're working on and to match it to whatever you need to create. The same goes for uh, this icon down here. This is the change to current layer, which kind of does the opposite. It's going to move an object to the current layer that you're on. So if I select this line here and I select that icon down here or type in lay cur L-A-Y-C-U-R, it's going to move it to the current layer that I had selected, which is the appliances layer. Now, another one that is super helpful and can save you a bunch of time and clean up a messy and kind of confusing drawing, you can use the lay merge, L-A-Y-M-R-G command. This is going to merge two layers into one to help get rid of either duplicate or similar layers, or to just free up some of your room in your list if you would like to streamline things and you've got too many layers. So if we choose the lay merge command by typing in L-A-Y M-R-G, so it's gonna ask you to select an object on a layer to merge. So this is the layer that you're going to merge into another layer. So I'm gonna select my dimension layer here and I'm going to merge it onto my text layer. So once you've selected the layers that you would like to merge to another one, simply hit space or enter. And now you're going to choose your destination or target layer. So this is the layer that's going to remain at the end. I'm going to choose the yellow uh, text one and I'm going to hit enter to continue after I choose yes I do like that it confirms that this is what you want to do and now you can see I've got all of these text objects on the text layer now this is going to save you a ton of time when you get say a random drawing with a ton of different names and layers and you want to clean it up fast merging and deleting excess or unneeded layers is a great way to do that that brings me to one of the last commands here, and that is the lay del, L-A-Y-D-E-L command. This is going to allow you to instantly and quickly delete layers regardless if they have objects on them. Now you're gonna to wanna to be careful with this one since it will delete everything on the layer regardless if there are objects on it. But if you'll notice, you can typically not delete any layers if they have objects on them. So we're gonna try and delete this 
uh, cabinetry layer. So I'm going to select it and choose the delete layer. And it says it was not deleted. And that is because it likely has objects on it, or it's your layer zero or def points, which cannot be deleted. So I can't delete that cabinetry one. But if I choose lay del as my command, L-A-Y-D-E-L, it's going to ask me for an object on a layer or a name to delete. I'm simply going to select my uh, cabinetry layer there, and you can see it deleted it instantly, including all of the objects that were on it. Now, I've hit escape to not delete all of my cabinetry, but this is a great trick to forcibly delete those layers that are stubborn. Sometimes they just have an object that's off in the middle of nowhere, or they were used within a block that maybe no longer exists, and you just want to delete these annoying layers to clean up your drawing. I hope these tips helped, and I just wanted to leave you with a few more best practices when it comes to layers. So as I mentioned initially, you want to always name your layers in conjunction with a standard, whether that's an industry one or your company one or one that you create yourself, but keep it descriptive, keep it clean and keep it organized. Uh, you always want to check that that plot symbol is unchecked for all of the layers that you want to be able to plot and print in your finished drawings. You're also going to want to use those layer and group filters to keep things organized and be able to quickly filter out and select only the layers you are working with and you want to add objects to at the time. I also like to keep a sheet or a uh, notepad with all of my layers as a layer key. This is great. You can either take a screenshot of your template layers or write them down or keep an Excel, which is even better because then it'll you can have rows and columns to indicate the default colors, line weights, line types, all of the different settings and what they should be. This is going to help you keep things consistent and ensure all of your drawings come out looking the same. And lastly, I want to encourage users to uh, use the lock uh, option for your layers once you're done editing them. This is a great way to prevent accidentally moving objects, changing things, deleting things, and it just makes your drawings easier to work on. If you've locked the important parts that shouldn't be moving, it also just makes you think twice if you do need to move them. You'll be like, oh yeah, I locked this, maybe that was for a reason. But that's all for today's quick AutoCAD Layers Explained video. If you guys have any questions, don't forget to leave them in the comments down below, and don't forget to check out my other videos on layers as well as other parts of AutoCAD Explained. I'll put that up here once the video ends and you can check out that whole playlist. Thanks for watching. Have a good one and cheers.